to start now looking at macroeconomics and uh, I'll show you first of all this macroeconomic model. Keep in mind that this this model as it was uh, was first developed in the 1930s by John Maynard Keynes as I explained during the Great Depression to understand why there was high unemployment and uh, what was going on. So he took the kind of the big picture. So I'll just I'll, I'll start with the graph that we'll be using in, in later lectures. So I've got the two axes here. You'll notice first of all we don't put Mathematics, they put X on the horizontal axis. I'm going to put uh, Y, which stands for this real GDP. And uh, that's a gross domestic product. We'll look at that. Then on the vertical axis, I'm going to put this triangle, which is the Greek letter delta, and then CPI. CPI stands for Consumer Price Index. We'll look at that also later. Then I'm going to put this hor vertical line, and uh, uh, this is the LRAS line. Again, we'll talk about this later. And... Uh, Incidentally, this is uh, a YP, stands for potential GDP, and again, we'll talk about this. And then finally, I'm going to have this curved line in, which is another curve, and it's the uh, AD curve. Now, just a little point here, you'll see that the two letters A, they both stand for aggregate. And of course, what we're looking at here is I've reduced down to a single graph, a simple model uh, of an entire country or an entire economy. So uh, <clears throat> I'm going to start by uh, showing, first of all, this, uh, what, what is this GDP thing? Let's start with that. Then uh, later we'll go to the CPI thing. We'll do that next second. And then I'll do this LRAS. Uh, we'll be doing that in a, probably about two or three, four lectures, something like that, three. And then at the very end, we'll do this AD thing. And that actually will take up a large part of the course. Incidentally, Keynes, uh, he, he was very concerned about this AD, which is aggregate demand. Uh, and that was a big part of his, uh, about his theory. Uh, he didn't really have CPI in it. And uh, he didn't put, he, although he had the letter Y, he didn't have GDP. That, this came along later. So uh, the, uh, the model is, is a bit more complex and sophisticated than he originally sketched out. So let's start with this GDP. What do we mean by that exactly? Now, a GDP is gross domestic product, which in French is produit intérieur brut. Uh, and I, I should make a point about this. I've got different ways of thinking of GDP, but I'll just mention these three to start with. In my mind, a GDP, initially, it's a variable in a theoretical macroeconomic model. So it's the axes here. And as Keynes imagined it, it doesn't really, it's not, it's not an actual number. It was just, it's a theoretical concept. It's like all the activity or all the act, economic activities of a, an entire society, entire country. Uh, it, it, it Later in the late 1940s and the 1950s, uh, statisticians began to realize that it may be possible to actually calculate this number. Now, I should mention that before this, economists had kind of wondered how do you go about measuring uh, all of the economic activity of a country, but uh, this was done in practical terms in the 1940s and 1950s, so it's measurable. And in fact, now in Canada, the Statistics Canada is an organization in Ottawa that does the, uh, uh, the calculation. All countries in the world make an effort at calculating. They do it in slightly different ways. Uh, the generic term for this is national income, national income accounts, or the national accounts, uh, invariably. Um, but in addition to this, uh, GDP, or gross domestic product, has taken on a life of its own. So it's commonly referred to in news reports or even in common speech, in which case often people will refer to things like economic activity, production figures, a recession, a depression. All of these terms generically refer to GDP. And uh, it, it's a bit of a problem because in my mind, it, it, it's best to keep of it its original intent. It was part of a theoretical macroeconomic model. And, and uh, it's kind of sometimes incorrect to use it for something more more than more than that, but people do, uh, and and we'll be looking at the, this different aspect of it. Uh, it. So, what is GDP precisely? Well, I I got this definition from a from a textbook in English. Uh, he, here here I've got uh, the French translation. I got that out of a French textbook. Um, so, GDP is the market value of all final goods and services produced within a territory in a given period of time. This is the definition that I found in this book, which I think is a pretty good definition. Um, it, 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 Keep in mind that this simple sentence here hides uh, quite a bit of complexity. And bear in mind, too, that um, the statistician, when they first started calculating this in the late 40s and 50s, I think they started in the United States, maybe in the United Kingdom, uh, they ran into a whole series of problems. And they've had to revise. And even Neum, they're still revising the definition and how it's calculated and so on. So this definition that I've given here in English is a, is a simplification. But this is the one I'm going to use. And we'll take this now sentence by sentence or word by word even and uh, uh, take a look at what this means exactly. So 
Let's start with GDP as the market value. So uh, one of the initial problems they faced, of course, is that a country like Canada produces many different things. A country produces, for example, apples and tomatoes, and they're different. Well, how do you add them together? Some things are measured in kilograms, others in liters. So they very quickly decided to add them together according to the market value, that market price. What this means in practice, though, is that if you, for example, go to uh, buy a box of Kraft Dinner at $1, it's on sale, uh, the GDP goes up by $1. If you, your friend buys the same box for $3.50, it goes up by three fifty. If you uh, If you buy... Um, an automobile for $20,000, GDP goes up by $20,000. So it always goes up by the price you paid for it, regardless of it, whatever the price may be. Now, this poses a problem, you can imagine. Well, what happens if you grow your own tomatoes in your backyard and give them to a friend? There's no market price. We can take a look at one of the problems that this poses. Of all, uh, Statistics Canada does the calculation and they try to be comprehensive. That means to say they try to include everything. But uh, there's a lot of things that are excluded. But uh, nevertheless, I'll, I'll give you one example of something they, where they try to be comp- include everything, and it seems a bit, may seem a bit odd. But just take this example. Uh, let's say you live in your own, uh, you live in an apartment, so you pay rent. So that means to say that uh, you receive the value of housing services, uh, your monthly rent is, say, $1,000 a month. That adds to gross domestic product, $1,000 every month, so it'd be $12,000 a year. But let's say your friend lives in their own house. They own the house. So as a result, they don't pay any rent. So Statistics Canada, what it does to correct for this, because otherwise GDP would give kind of a funny number because it would depend on who, who owns their house as opposed to who's, who's renting. What they do is they, they tr- make an effort to calculate how much an owner would pay if they were living in a rental, a rental unit. And they refer to this as the imputed rent. And this is added to gross domestic product. So it's an example of one area where they kind of adjust the statistic to try to be com- comprehensive to include everything. Uh, Final. This is a major point, and it was one of the first problems they ran into when they were first calculating GDP, is that they quickly understood that uh, some transactions include something that's been purchased before. And as a quick example, when you buy a, a new car, you, in effect, also buy four new tires. But General Motors, let's say, or a car company, well, they buy tires to put on the car. So the statisticians said, well, we can't count the tires twice because that would give us a false idea of economic activity. I'll give you the same example. You buy a Big Mac, implicitly you're also buying the electricity that was used to make the Big Mac. So McDonald's pays its electricity bill. It pays for like this transaction is not included and it's treated as what's called an intermediate good. So the basic principle is no double counting. So only final goods are, are counted. Well, then the question is, when, when is there a final transaction? At what point do we count a particular transaction or good that's being produced in, in, in Canada? And, and so uh, for this, uh, they followed Keynes, Keynesian theory, and uh, they said there is basically four groups. First of all, Canadian households. When they purchase something and your family buys something, that's considered uh, consumption, household consumption. We use the letter C for this. When a firm purchases something for investment, that means to say if McDonald's builds a new restaurant or it builds a new, installs a new cash system or a new software system for its restaurant, that's considered investment. It's it's included in gross domestic product. When the government buys something, you know, the, the, the logic there is that the government is buying it on our behalf, so that's included. And then finally, anytime a foreigner comes to Canada and purchases something, that's also included in gross domestic product. Um, the, you, you should remember these C, I, G, and N, X, because these are the four major components uh, that added into, into gross domestic product. Um, incidentally, Keynes, when he first uh, developed his theory, he didn't think about foreigners. That was added afterwards. So he, his simple model had only C and I and G. Um, incidentally, net exports stands for exports minus imports, and I'll talk a little bit more about that because imports, what are they, and so on. Uh, the the um, uh, the other little point here, which is a subtle point, and it's rather complicated, is uh, what's the difference between an investment good and an intermediate good? And if you notice up here, if McDonald's buys electricity, that's treated as an intermediate good, not included in GDP. Whereas if it's uh, buying a brick or building a restaurant, it's considered an investment good and it is included. This is a subtle distinction and uh, I'm not going to go into the details here about this more advanced course in macroeconomics. You could take a look at it.
or if you're interested in statistics and the calculation of GDP, then you'd have to know about it. Uh, goods and services. This is relatively simple. Uh, uh, the GDP includes both goods and services. So a good is something that's tangible. Haircuts, a service, doesn't matter. They both get added to GDP to the same amount. Uh, this is maybe a little bit relevant, though, is sometimes people think about manufacturing because it produces a good, an industrial good. And they often think that's more important than, say, something like software development, which is not tangible. Hey, I'm just showing you this picture. It made me laugh. This is Chinese money from a couple of years ago. And I guess the idea here is that it shows a woman driving a tractor, and somehow a tractor is something useful. But if you look in the pack here, you see there's a little factory with smoke coming out of it. And the idea there, too, is like a factory is good for the... But uh, it, it, for the GDP, and actually for econo- economists, and economists in general, whether it's a good... In industry, economies, there's rich people in the world, Co- countries are rich or they're doing very well and they don't have to produce something that's tangible. You can do very well with just producing intellectual property. Uh, produced, good point here. Uh, something has to be produced. That means to, to be included in gross domestic product, uh, you, you have to have a, a good or service that's being produced. Where is this relevant? Well, think about this. A financial transaction, for example, you buy shares on the Toronto Stock Exchange or you go to an ATM machine and withdraw money. The, these are just paper, financial paper for financial paper. Nothing gets produced. So as a result, there is no effect on gross domestic product. Um, if, if, and if you stop and think, many transactions in Canada, billions of dollars probably change hands or various uh, investments are made. In, I say investments. Um, uh, shares or something are purchased and nothing's produced not included in GDP. Same if, if you buy an old house. The house was built several years ago, so nothing is produced this year, not included. Now, if you go to an ATM machine and they charge you, like, say, $2 or $3 for using the ATM, that fee is included because it's considered a service produced this year. Uh, similarly, government transfers. Uh, if you think of uh, a lot of people receive the CERB payment, uh, for example, or you see maybe a scholarship or a bursary. Uh, some people receive a pension, older people. These are all government transfers. Where in effect, the government takes money from person A and gives it to person B. Nothing is produced. It's not included in. So when when we talk about government purchases, we mean purchasing, hiring a, somebody, a teacher to teach, or building a new road, or installing a traffic light, or something like this. This is what we mean by government. Incidentally, transfers are about half of the government budget in Canada. They're excluded from gross domestic product, not included in gross domestic product. A little point here too, about in common speech, people refer to making an investment, for example, in the stock market or something like that. In economics, we would refer to this as saving because you're delaying consumption. So investment in macroeconomics means building a new building or installing a new computer system or something like something. But that's what we mean by investment uh, as opposed to the common speech. In in French, it's a bit more clearly. It's investissement and les placements. Uh, within a territory. That's typically a, a country, but it could be, a, Statistics Canada calculates for a province, and you could calculate even for a city. But there is something quite relevant in this one, is that uh, when they first started calculating this idea of GDP, or economic activity, they actually calculated something called GNP. You'll notice the N here, and it stands for national product. And then uh, they had to revise this and change it to GDP. The difference here is the following, is that GDP is concerned about where something is produced. So GNP is concerned with who produces the nationality of the person. So in effect, if, for example, um, people from Mexico come to Canada, uh, we have migrant workers that work on farms, the fact that they're Mexican, they're since they're producing something on the territory of Canada, they are their work is included in Canada's gross domestic product. But since they're Mexican, it would be included in Mexico's GNP. In the 1950s, when they first started doing this calculation, the difference between the two was not great because usually their people were citizens of the country they were working in. But of course, what's happened in the last 20, 30 years, now there's Canadians, for example, teaching English in Korea, or, and there's Mexicans coming to Canada working here, and, and the consequence makes it extremely difficult to calculate gross national product. You'd have to find out what Canadians are doing. And it's not just Canadians, it's also Canadian uh, uh, machinery, and Canadian uh, 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 f- uh, physical assets that are being used abroad. So the calculation is difficult. So now they simply say anything occurring on the territory of Canada is part of Canada's gross domestic product and it doesn't matter who does it. Uh, a point here to th- remember too is where the good is consumed is doesn't matter. So if a, if a, if a foreign tourist, American tourist comes to Canada, buys fruit that's 
picked, grown in Canada, picked by a Mexican and takes it back to the United States to consume it, 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 it would still be included in Canada's gross domestic product because it was produced here in Canada. Whether it's consumed by somebody other, not matter. Uh, in a given period of time, typically that's one year, uh, but they also do estimates. Statistics Canada makes an estimate for quarters. That's a trimester. So like the first quarter is January to March and so on. Uh, and I think now they even make them uh, estimates for each month. So they calculate the numbers quickly for one month. They publish it, and then they revise it later. Uh, uh, but this is relevant in the following sense. No double counting. So that means to say only goods that were produced this year, if you're calculating gross domestic product for 2020, they'd only count the goods that are produced in 2020. So for example, if you buy a used car that was made uh, several years ago, uh, that's not counted. It would have been counted the year it was produced. If somebody washed the car before selling it to you, of course, the washing of the car would be included. But... Uh, um, when we add this all together for, I've got data here for 2019, uh, we come up with a number that's about 2.3 trillion, which huge number, I have no idea what this means, 2.3 trillion uh, uh, Canadian dollars. Note that in Canada, we measure, of course, in Canadian dollars because it's the market value. In the United States, it's calculated in U.S. dollars. In Japan, it'll be calculated in yen. In the U.K., in British pounds. In France, it'd be done in euros. So each country has to calculate nominal GDP. I use this word nominal. I'm going to come back to that later to understand the distinction, uh, why we use the ad word nominal there. Um, but this is 2.3 trillion Canadian dollars kind of meaningless, but uh, the, make it understandable is I'll take the population of Canada, about 35, 36 million, and we can talk now about uh, 60, $61,000 roughly per person or per capita. Uh, per capita, that means like per head. Uh, and this number is a little bit more understandable. So you can sort of say that in a family, of, a family or a household of three people, say you've got two roommates, it's roughly about 180,000. That means that Canada produces, keep what this means, what this means, Canada produces about $180,000 for a family of for a family of three, typical average family. But of course, that includes all the things the Canadian economy produces, that some things that are sold to foreigners, things that the government purchases on our behalf, and includes the things that we might purchase. And, and it's an average, so it means that uh, the, you know, the average, there's going to be some people that are richer, some people are rich or poor. I'm not quite sure if you mean rich or poor, it just means goods that are produced. <laughs>